Hello my friends and thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. So after Fuego in Guatemala, now Pacaya volcano erupts. Meanwhile, 99 dead following Fuego volcanic eruption and, and they found more bodies. And so they're thinking that we're looking at somewhere between two and 300 more most likely um, killed in that eruption. And now Pacaya is erupting. And so we see more and more activity as we go. And so Pacaya has erupted with explosions and lava flows stretching over 50 meters and 20 meters wide on the northern flank of the volcano. And, uh, you know, which is nothing compared to what happened at Fuego, but it just shows you the activity that we have going on right now. So we are definitely in very, very active times, and all this is adding to the particulates in the air, which is just going to increase the moisture and increase the flooding that we're seeing, and it's also going to increase the rapid transition into the grand solar minimum and bringing those cold temperatures once we get back into the fall and the winter. So Kilauea has really been very, very uh, systematic and steady right now. It's in a pattern of ebbing and flowing at, with these eruptions. And so right now, if we take a quick peek, we will see that we're looking at 242 earthquakes right now in 24 hours. And so that's relatively low for what it's been doing. It will go ahead and start to rise up, get up into that over the 300 threshold, up probably around 400 or so, and then boom, we have a volcanic eruption somewhere between 5 and 5.4, 5.5 in magnitude, and then the earthquakes will go down, and then they'll start to rise again. So it's, it's in this cycle, and... At least the USGS is showing that the size of these volcanic eruptions is pretty similar. And, you know, again, do we trust them? Probably not. Uh, but it's an interesting pattern that we're seeing. So we see the diamond right here. The diamond is a 5.4 volcanic eruption, six kilometers southwest of Kilauea. And you can see the depths, negative 1.1 kilometers. And so, as we can see, everything at the moment is clustered pretty much in the normal area. So, what we were seeing before over towards Mauna Loa, we don't see at the moment. And if we just pop out and take a look at what else is happening, uh, fairly active. We have a 5.3 over here in the Solomon Islands, a 5.0 in Papua New Guinea. Another 4.9 in Papua New Guinea, 4.3 over in Indonesia, 4.8 in the Philippines, 4.1 over in Guam. In Japan, we have a 4.2. It's pretty deep, 426 kilometers deep, 4.6 over in Japan. And then 4.2 over in Chile. In the Tristan de Cuna region, we have a 5.1. As we do every day, 4.8 in Mayotte, somewhere in between 4.5 and 5.5 every day over in this East African rift. And then in India, we have a 4.4. And typical swarming going on in California. And same thing with Alaska. One of them that stuck out to me over here was this a 2.3 Soda Springs, Idaho at negative 1.8 kilometers. So that's probably somewhere around six, 7,000 feet uh, above sea level. So it, it could be indicative of, of some sort of magma flow. Just, just something to keep in mind. And as usual, there's flooding going on. This is what we have all the time now. This is Oklahoma. Flooding causing major issues for drivers all through Oklahoma City. And, you know, still there's so much saturated ground everywhere. And this article is basically, it's saying coastal flooding likely to continue breaking records. And now they're saying coastal flooding, although, you know, the flooding we saw in Asheville, North Carolina, has nothing to do with the coast. So 
I don't know, this one felt like they're trying to spin it on global warming still. As they typically do, they're saying high tide flooding happens twice as often in coastal areas as it did 30 years ago due to rising sea levels, according to a new report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And of course, you know, NOAA, we, we look at everything from NOAA like we do from NASA and uh, from the USGS, always with a little suspicion. Uh, as to you know what they want to sell us and what do they want to hide but yeah I mean we do definitely have record floods going on but obviously what we're seeing in so many areas that are inland um, doesn't have anything to do with the high tides on the shore and what we're seeing is directly related to the grand solar minimum and basically the magnetosphere has declined all the particulates going up in the air from the volcanoes it's it's not something that al gore was talking about so surge in solar power is actually flooding australia's national grid so this is all about they have too much energy going into the grid because so many people have gone to solar and so many companies have gone to solar well that doesn't seem like a problem at all uh, definitely a, a good thing in tapping into the solar and um, it's wonderful to be off grid when you can and I know I made the comments before about like in some places it's actually illegal in the United States to be off grid and uh, that is actually the case in some communities not everywhere in the United States just some local communities some cities you know in some states it's actually illegal for you to be off the grid and um, you know that there's just something wrong about that and solar power is definitely something that we should look into of course in many areas you know we're going to be getting a lot more cloud cover so other alternatives um, should definitely be utilized as well and over here now this was the big statement from NASA today so Curiosity rover unearths building blocks of life in 3 billion old organic matter on Mars so they're not saying that they found life they found the building blocks for life so as this says right here, researchers cannot yet say whether their discovery stems from life or from a more mundane geological process. However, we're in a really good position to move forward looking for signs of life, said a NASA biochemist and leading author of a study, Jennifer Eigenbrode, uh, published Thursday in a peer-reviewed journal of science. And so the findings were also remarkable in that they showed that organic material can't be preserved for billions of years in the harsh Martian climate. The material was discovered by the Mars Curiosity rover, which has been collecting data on the red planet since August of 2012. The organic molecules were found in Gale Crater, believed to once contain a shallow lake the size of Florida's Lake Okeechobee. For the past six years, Curiosity has sifted samples of soil and ground up rock for signs of organic molecules. The complex carbon change that on Earth formed the building blocks of life. Past detections have been so faint that they could be just contamination. Now samples from two different drill sites on the ancient lake bed have yielded complex organic molecules that look strikingly similar to the goopy fossilized building blocks of oil and gas on Earth. The rover also discovered traces of methane in the Martian atmosphere, which was reported in a second paper of science. And this is significant because most methane on Earth, for instance, comes from biological sources. The detection of organic molecules and methane on Mars has far-ranging implications in light of potential past life on Mars. So, the Curiosity has shown that Gale Crater was habitable about 3.5 billion years ago with conditions comparable to those on early earth where life evolved around that time the question of whether life might have originated or existed on mars is a lot more opportune now that we know that organic molecules were present on its surface at that time 
So with these new findings, Mars is telling us to stay the course and keep searching for evidence of life. I'm confident that our ongoing and planned missions will unlock even more breathtaking discoveries on the red planet. So what do you guys make of that? For me, it, it, it really makes me almost laugh because I think it's, it's just so strikingly obvious that there's life there, there was, there was life here that was probably pre-human, and there's probably life all over the galaxy and the universe and the multiverse. Life is, is not just, uh, you know, this tiny little pocket that we have on Earth. To think that we're all there is is just insane. It makes absolutely no sense at all to think that this is all that there is. That's just, it just is so illogical. And, and in fact, like again, as we look at the Vedas, you know, they talk about all different types of humanoid species in the galaxy with, you know, thousands of different humanoid species, just humanoid in the galaxy. And we have traditions throughout all the indigenous people of the star beings that come to the earth. So it's obvious there's extraterrestrials. And uh, it's, it's kind of comical, really, to think that we've been sold this, that, that there, there's so little life out there, if there is any at all, there's just us. We really don't know. And so it, it just really strikes me as funny. But other questions as well. Did humans walk the earth with the dinosaurs? Triceratops horn dated to 33,500 years. So a, tricer a Triceratops brow horn discovered in Dawson County, Montana has been controversially dated to around 33,500 years ago, challenging the view that dinosaurs died out about 65 million years ago. The finding radically suggests that early humans may have once walked the earth with the fearsome reptiles thousands of years ago. So this one was excavated in May of 2012 and stored at the Glendive Dinosaur and Fossil Museum. The museum, which has been in cooperation since 2005 with Paleochronology Group, a team of consultants in geology, paleontology, chemistry, engineering, and education, they sent the sample uh, to the Paleochronology Group, Hugh Miller, at his request in order to carry out a carbon-14 dating. And so he sent the sample to the University of Georgia Center for Applied Isotope Studies for this purpose, and the sample was divided at the lab into two fractions with the bulk or collagen breakdown products yielding an age of 33,570 years, plus or minus 120 years, and the carbonate fraction of the bone bioapatite yielding an age of 41,010 years, plus or minus 220 years. So Mr. Miller told Ancient Origins that this is always desirable to carbon-14 date, carbon date several fractions to minimize the possibility of errors, and that essential concordance was achieved in the thousands of years, as with all other bone fractions of 10 other dinosaurs. So, you know, the Triceratops was always a favorite of mine when I was a little kid. This was one of the ones that I loved and always used to play with all the time. So I don't know about you guys, but I always, I always wanted the tri tri Triceratops to beat the T-Rex, the big nasty T-Rex, and all the old dinosaur movies that we had back, you know, from the 60s and 70s. So, what do you make of this? When we question what we're told. I mean, should we should we question everything? If really there are powers that be in charge uh, with agendas to keep us in the dark and to keep us controlled, perhaps, you know, so much of what we've been taught is completely wrong. And perhaps this is another one of those things. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, dinosaurs were around just, you know, 33,000 years ago. But how do we really, really know? You know, because everything is really done on acceptance. And when we look at how this works, and, you know, so many of these schools, you know, they get their funding, and a lot of times there's biases and prejudices 
and desired outcomes. And we've seen this with like the Smithsonian too. And in case you guys haven't heard all about the countless bodies of giants that have been dug up, sent to the Smithsonian where they just disappear because they don't fit in with what they want to tell us, the story they want to give us. So again, is this perhaps another another thing that is being covered up? And some, some people will reference the Bible and talk about Le- Leviathan and Behemoth. And then some could, could look to some of the stories of some of the Africans when we first um, got there. And some of the things they were describing were not rhinoceroses and elephants and gorillas. And in case you're not familiar with those stories, many times there was, especially like in the Congo and then some of the other areas, and also in the Amazon as well, uh, the natives would describe stuff that sounded, these, these creatures that sounded very, very much like dinosaurs still alive there. And you know, it makes you wonder also about the legends of, of dragons and things along those lines. So we've, see, we've found fossils of human footprints and the same rock sediment as those of dinosaur fossils. And so it doesn't make any sense. And then, of course, you know, if, you, if you've ever looked into forbidden archaeology, uh, Michael Cremo's work, just great stuff. And, and we have all these anomalous objects, you know, things that are manufactured in metal and strata of rock that supposedly is two million years old or, or older. So there's so many of these anomalous objects and things that just don't fit. And so as this is showing right here, you know, these bones listed are giving these dates, which are all in between 22,000 and 30, 39,000 years ago before present. So there's more than one that's coming through like this. So what really is the truth? And then over here, and uh, I believe this comes from Angkor Wat. Yeah, Angkor Wat. And so this is in Cambodia. And that's clearly a Stegosaurus. I mean, look at that. Now, some would say, well, maybe they found a fossil. Do you, do you think so? Or, I mean, this looks really like they saw the live living creature. And they did it, you know, they did a representation of it. And we see that in many other cultures around the world. There's a lot of things that just don't seem to fit. The, the traditional timeline that we're given. And so like that textile is from Nazca, Peru. And, you know, Peru is just full of amazing oddities and question marks. It's loaded with them. So what does this really point to? How can we trust really anything that we're taught from, from scientists when you get down to it? So many of these studies are, are really done with agendas in mind. And so if somebody speaks out too, they, you know, against the norm, boy, do they get persecuted. So it just, it's another thing to make you wonder, what's the real true history of this planet? What is the true history? That's really, that's a big question. And that's something that would be wonderful for us to find out. And it'd be wonderful for them to come clean and let us know what they really know instead of keeping us in the dark. So I look forward to your guys' comments on that. As always, please do thumbs up to support the channel. Subscribe and click the bell so you do get all the updates and join this family that's growing really fast. Share, share, share as much as you can. Wake up people as much as possible. Let's force change in this world. Let's do it by sharing and waking up as many people as we can and getting more people active in and letting the word out on you know, it's time to change things. It's time to change mindsets. It's time to not accept what we've been sold anymore. It's time that we, we really want to know the truth about what is really going on. And we want positive change. So as always, my friends, I look forward to your comments. 
May you be blessed with love, light, peace, and abundance, and safety in these times. Thank you. God bless and namaste.